Hello and welcome everyone to our series, Conversations with Women Who Win. My name is Namita Shah. I'm a lawyer. I'm based in London. Today, I will be interviewing a very special guest who I'm so excited to introduce to you. She's a film star, an Indian film star, who has acted in a number of movies across a number of languages, including Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu and Kannada. One of her first movies, Roja, made her immensely popular and a household name across India. After a hiatus, she has not only returned to the silver screen, but is now also a motivational speaker. She truly demonstrates that women can win in many different ways. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you Madhu, the Roja girl. Madhu, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. What a wonderful uh, introduction you gave me. It makes me feel very proud of myself. So thank you for that. Thank you. You have taken all of those experiences, maybe the not so pleasant experiences and the negative interactions and taken the positive out of those and use them as your building blocks to make you who you are, right? Yeah. A person yeah. who's very positive, who looks ahead, who looks up and is ready to move, acknowledging fully, you know, the, the follies that we may have as human beings, right? But just enriching yeah. yourself and trying to make yourself better instead of making it you know, maybe even an ego question or anything else, right? Yeah. You have converted yeah. the question into your building blocks and built yourself and made yourself better from it, isn't it? The first, Namita, when that first guy rejected me, I owe my entire life to that one man who first picked me. He picked me. That is when I had the courage to tell my father, yes, I want. Otherwise, I didn't even express it to my own parent. So then he rejected me. Yes, as a young child, as a young girl, I was totally upset. But he rejected me because I was not skilled. It is my responsibility to hone my skills. After his rejection, I did filmy dance, you know, the Bollywood dance lessons. I took acting school. I took diction class. I lost my weight. I went to a salon to, uh, you know, to uh, style myself. I did all this. I prepared myself and then I attempted again. So how yes. can I be angry with the man who actually told me that you don't have what it takes to be an actor because it is him who showed me the mirror. It is now my uh, opportunity to change the image in the mirror. He is not wrong. It, but I had to realize that the mirror is not right. I had what to change the attitude. Image. Beautiful yeah. attitude. That's fantastic. It's so nice to hear. That's lovely. Um, may I ask you, so, you know, from being this uh, film star to then you went to being a stay-at-home mom, what advice would you give women, you know, who are contemplating the transition? A lot of us do. We have successful careers and then, you know, we choose another path and then sometimes worry. You know, there's a lot of self-doubt when you want to come back. How do you deal with that? How did you deal with that? Uh, yes, of course, uh, it's going to happen. You're going to question your decision. When I gave up the industry, uh, I was, uh, I think, a little upset at that point because I wanted to do flamboyant roles. I wanted to do amazing roles. And because it was the action era, you know, there were people like Ajay Devgan. There were people like Akshay Kumar, Sunil Shetty. They were all action heroes. And I was doing the romantic lead with them. So, you know, and I had already done movies like Roja and I had done some amazing movies in the South and I wanted that for me even in Hindi. But because, the, you know, it is just what it is. Life is just what it is. I may want it, but it was not what was happening. So I was, you know, experiencing a lot of frustration and then I fell in love. And when, it fe when I fell in love and I wanted to get married and all that, it seemed very natural that now I will leave this industry and focus here and start a family with full, you know, focus. And I did that and I enjoyed my babies. Every step, every morsel, every word, the first word, the first step, I enjoyed being that mother. But soon I realized that I'm an artist now, you know, I need to express myself. I have to feel. So it was also a, just the quitting was a natural progression. Wanting to rejoin also was a natural progression. And yes, because staying away for so many years, the industry has moved on. I, you know, there are a lot of catching up to do. I had to reinvent myself, change myself. So all again, 
the facing of humiliation facing of rejection uh, you know but the thing is you take it in your stride you know you cry a few tears uh, you uh, cry a few days you have few bad days and you have some good support good friends i have some great friends and i have the love of my children and my in-laws and my family and my husband so you gus gus ke ro gus gus ke thoda sa you know support kheech lo and then you come out and again go there so karte karte the point i'm making is keep on trying and then success will come to you it may not come to you at the first attempt but it has to come to you at the 10th attempt or the 50th attempt the point is if you want it you just stick around if you don't want it you you know just leave it but if you want it stick around don't um, my my lesson in life is not to yes you get disheartened you feel upset you feel all that but just don't quit it so that's you know and you try to take and, away and this works in every arena of life namita as you know because even in if you are losing weight you know the point you know if you want to lose weight the point is not you run on the treadmill today you burn 500 calories and you say climb on the scale and see if you've lost 500 grams it doesn't happen like that so sometimes you work out and work out and work out and you've lost no weight you feel dejected and you cry but the point is you cry you feel sad but get back on the mat again get back on that you know the schedule again and suddenly after 2 years after 3 years after 6 months when you don't expect it somebody tells you hey you've lost weight and you climb on the scale and you say yeah my god i've lost 3 kilos <laughs> when i could not lose 300 grams what happened i've lost 3 kilos so you know in everything in life you have to do what you have to do and result will come when it has to come you are only lucky if it comes immediately but eventually it will come if you don't give up because very often we get so disappointed that i am working out i'm working out teen mahine ho gaye che mahine ho gaye kuch farak nahi pada and then you say chal na yaar now i don't want to work out it is that that is when you lose you don't lose when you don't get favorable results you lose when you say hell with it i'm not going to do this anymore that's when you lose so even in a race you don't lose when you fall you lose when you don't get back and run again madhu can i ask you you have two daughters what kind of advice would you give them based on your life experiences and part two likewise what do you wish you could have done in your youth you know or would have done differently based on what you see your daughters on how they live you know with the attitude that they live today yeah with my daughters i am very tentative to give advice because young teenagers don't like preachy moms <laughs> true you know the minute you sound like you're giving advice they close it, 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 they their system shuts you down true so but if you want to get your meaning across yes. you have to see the timing you know when when they are sitting chilled out receptive to what you're saying and give it in very small doses so it just goes there and you know not talking and preaching and advising them because teenagers believe they know it all Come and uh, so when you are trying to tell them that what you know is not entirely the truth then they don't want to hear you so it's better that they get you in small doses than completely shut you off when you're trying to talk to them that is one thing i've realized and second of all what i want to say i say it. whether they take it or not i don't um, you know i don't pay too much attention because i know that one day like today i remember everything that my mother said when i was very young my mama said that my father said that but when they were telling me that i never listened to them so in the same way what i have learned from my experience i put it in their ears when they want to act on it it's up to them and i also feel that what i know is from my life experiences of 50 years plus how can i uh, expect my 20 year old children to understand what i know today 
so i i allow them to take their lessons on their own and i pray to god that god hope they learn their lessons quickly without too much pain that's what i do but i don't badger them with advice and what do i wish for myself which i see in them i was a very very shy a uh, very scared child and sometimes when i look at my children i see young confident women whether they are right or wrong according to my understanding is a different matter but i see them to be stronger uh, and they are you know they are just stronger in their concepts and uh, they are more honest uh, my experiences taught me to keep my mouth shut i never wanted to share my pain or my stories with anyone but what i see in my children is that they are so uh, open about sharing their pain with me with their grandparents with their friends and they don't mind being judged as weak you know they are not afraid of being judged and i i find myself i always want to project this person and i see my children that they are not trying to project they are who they are and that i find is very endearing and very brave so i wish i i sometimes even today my daughter tells me like for example she caught me in a very crotchety bad mood yesterday and she kept asking me why are you in a bad mood and i kept saying no baby i'm not i'm not but in the end when i was about to sleep i said i'm a little bit under the weather she said oh you are in a bad mood because you are under the weather all you had to say to us was that you are under the weather and we would have left you alone you could have slept and recovered why put up this whole pretense that you are fine when you are not fine and then feel angry and then feel crotchety so they i find my children very emotionally honest and i find myself a uh, very very uh, you know stiff upper lip straight back i want to project so i find um, you know i wish i could relax and just be a little bit you know whatever it is it is i have to get that in me i'm <laughs> always a war- i'm always a warrior but my <laughs> children are teaching me that you don't always have to be in a warrior mode you can just be okay and it's okay to be not okay it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to let people see that you are not okay which is something that you know i have not been when i'm not okay i fight and i make things okay my children are teaching me it's okay to not be okay i i i, I get what you're saying i totally get it yes um may i just ask you like any tips on how to deal with um bereavement uh and all of us have experienced it on one level or another during these times do you uh, have any views that you could share on that please yeah this is like a pain that you know um it's not i cannot speak for someone else i personally lost my father in 2020 he was my you know he was everything to me and i lost him yeah and uh, you know that sense of mortality has hit me i'm so scared i've lost so many people in the, to the pandemic to the you know the covid thing so many of my staff uh, people i know knew i have lost them and it's very very sad and it i don't know you have to remember them you have to cry and each one will take his own time depending on his relationship with that person you know how close that person was but it's always nice to remember at the back of your head that this is life this is the way of life um i mean this is what is going to happen to all of us i know that when it happens it is really really sad and nobody you know we all understand it but nobody can feel i can't feel your grief and your sadness all i can say is you have to feel it cry it and as long as it takes please go through it don't allow anybody to say give you time you know now 10 days you've cried now enough one month you've cried now enough if you take years it's okay it's your loss and you have a right to cry in fact acknowledge it stay with it and cry and i'm really sorry uh, for all of us and all the people who've lost their dear ones it's so so hard so so um sad it is and my condolences to you i know i lost my dad as well in 2020 so i i understand where you're coming from and that that's the reason which prompted this question because um you know 
like I said, I, I'm a fan after hearing your interview. I just really wanted to get a sense of how you're approaching this, how you're dealing with this, because, you know, that's where the true metal of a person comes through sometimes, isn't it? It's, it's good that way just to know. Um, so that was a brilliant conversation. Now for a quick rapid fire round, please, if you don't mind. Um, any questions, silly, serious, whatever. I hope that's fine with you, Madhu. Uh, Anything so, is Cool. So first question, your all-time favorite Bollywood movie. All-time favorite Bollywood movie. Oh my God. Um, okay. You know, I love Sita. Okay. Lovely. Sita. You know, uh, so I like Charles Baz. Years later, Sri Devi. Absolutely. Sita so I, I, I loved uh, Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara. Uh, you know, I liked, but you know that Sita or Gita, that time, uh, I love Satya Pe Satya. Um, you know, Hemaji is my cousin. So I have very fond memories of uh, going to her set with my parents, uh, watching her trial. Most of her films I've seen in preview shows. So that era of having all my aunts and uncles and my father and mother and those movie types that the good will always win. Dharamji will always bash the evil guys and everything will be okay. I love that dialogue. Uh, so I love that. And I love that movie as well. Um, Om Shanti Om. I love that movie. I'm a Shah Rukh Khan fan. I love Shah Rukh Khan. I love all his movies. And I love Deepika and Shah Rukh's first, that Om Shanti Om. And I love that dialogue. That Hamari Zindagi bhi Hamari Filmo ki tarah. Ant mein sab kuch thik ho jata hai. Happy ending. And I love movies with happy ending. And today I find, uh, you know, in the name of uh, arty films, re re realistic movies, uh, I find that, you know, there are no happy endings. Happy endings are very like, you know, but I love movies with happy endings and I love Sita or Gita. Brilliant. And if you were not a film star, what would you have been? I tried being an aerostice. I failed. I didn't get the job. So if I was not, if I were not a film star, I'm very happy being a stay home mother. And uh, doing my, you know, uh, prayers, reading the Vedas, trying to understand life beyond what you can see and touch. That gives me a lot of pleasure. I think I would have just spent my life in that zone. Wow. And what's your favorite holiday destination then? I guess you're a uh, travel aficionado. So what is your uh, uh, favorite travel destination? I'm going to disappoint you here because as much as I like to travel to all those amazing exotic places, uh, in the end, I love going to London and uh, just getting lost in London because London is like home away from home. Okay. So I have the comfort of home because I have my, you know, in-laws and I have a running home in London. So it feels like, you know, everything is taken care of. And yet it's a holiday for me because I actually live in Mumbai. So I just get lost in the parks, in the malls, in the cafes. I, and so it's a holiday, but I have the comfort and security of a home. So even though I love traveling to amazing places, but going to London gives me the ultimate joy. <laughs> what is the best way to spend a Saturday night? Um, Saturday night, I don't know. I've always uh, think of drinking and dancing. <laughs> I think that's a brilliant answer. And just the correct <laughs> formula. In the old days, we used to go to the nightclubs. And nowadays, it's always in a friend's home, somebody's home where, you know, there's great music, there's great alcohol and you drink and you dance and you laugh. Saturdays are best when it's spent with good friends, good drinks and good music. 100%, 100%. Uh, what is it that you do every day for your mental well-being? Uh, I spend uh, every day However busy I am, um, you know, at work, shooting, not shooting, relax, Sunday, whatever the day may be, I wake up and I do my yoga every day. 
Okay, excellent. And is that also uh, the best thing also for your physical health, right? Yeah, when I feel physically healthy and strong, then I do an intense workout. When I'm relaxed and I'm lazy or whatever, I just do my general stretches. But that staying with my body as soon as I wake up uh, is the best thing that I do for myself. It's a time that I spend for myself and that's the best thing I do for myself. Your favorite comfort food? Uh, I like street food. I like pani puri. And uh, when I'm sick, I like, I'm a South Indian. So I love my dahi chawal with achar. Fantastic. Pani puri, you're a person after my own heart. <laughs> What's a superpower you would like to have? Uh, I would like to have the gift of uh, blessing uh, and taking away pain, especially like, you know, I can't see my children in pain, even though I know that it is life. Just as I have cried, they are going to cry their share. I know that it's life, but I want the power to wipe away the tears from my children's face. I want to make their life so easy that they never have to cry. And that's the superpower I'd like to have. A skill you would like to learn? Um, a skill I would like to learn is uh, I love singing. I'm a bathroom singer. I would really like to train myself and sing really well. <laughs> well, you know, we'll wait for that as well. And say if you had the entire world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you like to say? Um, for 30 seconds, I would say that I'm living a blessed life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Ma. Fantastic. So you fully believe in the attitude of gratitude, right? Because everything, Namita, everything. Even the pain, it is only to help you in some way. And I truly believe that. Even during the tears of pain, I know that there's something amazing coming through that. And therefore, I like to believe living my life in total gratitude. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Madhu. It's been such a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. To watch this and other inspiring, very inspiring stories like Madhu's, please join Women Who Win on our social media pages. Thank you.